Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to show a very simple restore from brew followed by an archive mp5. So we'll use a tape in an HP tape library connected to this Mac which has been written by brew and we'll reuse the brew software to restore the contents of that tape back to this Arcuware share on the desktop and once we've done that we will quit brew, fire up p5 and we will use the archive module within p5 to rewrite that data back to a different tape in the tape library. And once we've done that we will be able to browse the contents of the archive in the P5 web interface and select some data and then restore that back to disk. So let's start. So we're using this uh, the copy of Brew PE which already has a archive uh, which we're just opening. So Brew will have a look at that archive database and then it allows us to see what was inside. And then we can browse within the folder structure contained within that archive. Uh, we'll drill down to find some files that we are going to restore back to disk. We drag that footage folder which is the one that we're going to restore uh, down to the bottom section and uh, we can then select a folder that we want to restore to and that's going to be this archive share uh, piece of network storage which is mounted on the desktop. Uh, in there we'll create a new folder for our restore and we'll call that brew, restore, create that folder, choose it and then trigger the restore and by clicking continue we get to just choose the uh, left hand 12 slots of the tape library which is predefined and called L12 in this brew installation and then brew will load the tape which is currently in slot 10 into the drive and the restore will begin. So we'll wind forward because this takes a little while but once the restore begins we see a live list of individual file names that are being written back to the archive share. Let's speed up the next uh, few minutes whilst all of these files are restored back and so we can close the progress window and and if we go looking on the Arcuware share in the brew restore folder that we've restored into we'll see our footage folder uh, with various folders and files inside and if we have a look at the total size we can see there is uh, about 160 gigabytes that we just restored from that tape. So we're now finished with brew we can close down the brew application so that it will no longer be accessing the tape hardware and we'll now click to the Chrome web browser which is pointing at the localhost IP which gives us Arcuware P5's login screen. Um, so we're going to log in using the default username and password to get into P5. This is not a fresh installation of P5. I did some configuration here in advance including putting in a license, uh, an evaluation key uh, and also adding the HP G3 series tape library which is a simple few clicks via a wizard which both adds the tape library and the LTO6 drive inside and I have labeled a tape here you can see in slot 13 uh, to be available to P5 as an archive tape so that we can re-archive the data that exists in this share so this footage folder that you're seeing here in the finder is what we are now going to re-archive to tape. Within P5 I have created what's called an archive plan. So this is an archive configuration uh, called P5 Archiver. If I double click on it I'll just show you that under the previews tab I have configured generators for both still images uh, via ImageMagick and FFmpeg to generate proxies of movies and I've also attached a small script that will ingest some metadata from the files that we are about to archive which will give us much better visibility of those files once the archive is complete which we'll see shortly. Over here in the auto archive tab we can actually set up a hot folder or a bunch of folders that will be archived repeatedly according to the schedule that you set up here. So you can see we have a four hour interval between nine and six in the evening. So you could use this in the case of migrating data to be migrating into the hot folder and then have P5 automatically archive the contents of that folder according to the schedule that you set up. 
For our demo, we'll use the manual archiving feature which allows us to browse live file systems and go and select data to be archived. So in order to archive that folder, I visit the manual archiving section and then simply browse into the file system to find that footage folder. I add it to my archive selection, a bit like a shopping basket. I could add other folders here as well. And when I'm ready, I just click the archive button, make sure I've got my P5 archiver selected, click start to begin, and then I will pull up the monitor window, which will give us a live view of what's going on in the web browser. So you can see here, P5 tells us that it's taking that uh, tape in slot 13 and moving it to drive one. And if we skip forward a couple of minutes, uh, we'll get to the point where P5 is actually writing the data to the tape. So you can see this is reporting back uh, write speeds, how many uh, megabytes per second, gigabytes per hour, or terabytes per day. And it tells us that it's written about a gigabyte so far. So this will take uh, about 30 minutes or so now, so let's skip forward again. At this point you can see the job monitor is reporting that it's generating clips. These are the video or still image previews that we store in the archive index, so you can see what it was that you archived without actually restoring it. So that will run for a few minutes. Let's skip forward a couple of minutes ahead again. And now we see extracting metadata, which goes quite quick. So this is looking at each of the video files that we've archived and extracting some information such as resolution, uh, duration and so on. You can write custom scripts to do this. So once this is done, we have a completed job with a green light at the bottom, uh, indicating that uh, the job was successful. If we double click on this, we can see some information about the job, such as how many files, how much data, and also which tape P5 used to uh, write that data. Uh, closing the job monitor window, if we now go look within the P5 interface at our tape, we can see there's 160 something gigabytes now on that tape. That tape exists in this archive pool. You can have many tapes in a pool. So this tells you the total capacity across all the tapes. So having archived that data to tape, the procedure within P5 to recover something is to visit the Restore tab. Under Archive, we go to the default archive index, and then we simply browse the path on the file system that we archived from. So uh, Brew Restore Footage, here's the stuff that we archived. Uh, we can look in any folder within the archive. Uh, this one has MOV files in, and if I click on one of those MOV files, uh, double click on one of those files, we can see the properties for the file, including a uh, proxy that we recorded of the original video, in this case just the first 30 seconds, and also these metadata fields. So we have the image size, the codec, the duration, and the frame rate, all ingested from the original file and stored away in the P5 archive index. So you can search on this information to help locate files that you might want to recover later. This properties window also shows you the archive date uh, and the size of the file that was archived and the tape volume that it was written to. It might be that you archived this file multiple times on different dates and so this uh, list of archive events would grow. I can also open an information panel whilst I'm browsing the files in this folder and as I flick around I can see the previews playing back for each file plus the metadata is shown beneath the preview. At the top, I can use the search button to make a search against file name or any of the metadata items for anything inside of the index. For example, searching for name contains word cloud gives us these five results and clicking on each one allows us to see why they match the search results. Any files located within the index can be restored. Let's just uh, drop into this dailies folder, day two, then this folder and make a selection of some of these movie files. I'll click on Add to Restore Selection to open my uh, shopping basket type mechanism where I can go add other folders or files from other locations, building a list of things to recover in one operation. So let's also add this folder to the Restore Selection here. And then when we're ready to restore, simply click Restore 2 
and uh, in the, for the purposes of this demo rather than restoring back over the original files I will click on the little file browsing button here which will allow me to go choose another folder to restore into so let's make a new folder and name it p5 restore restored and choose that folder there are various options for dealing with uh, overwriting existing files or not so we'll leave that as it is because we're restoring to an empty folder p5 will now count up that there are 26 gigabytes worth of files here to restore and also lists the tape or tapes in the library if there's more than one tape then we'll handle the automated loading of tapes as needed and again the monitor button that we used earlier reveals the job monitor and now we can see our restore job spinning and running and loading the tape from slot 13 back into the LTO drive let's skip forward again to the point where the job is just finishing you can see it's restored those 33 files 26 gigabytes the job has finished you can see another green light against the restore job at the bottom of the job monitor indicating all is well and now if we go visit the folder that we restored back to we'll see the p5 restored folder with everything inside that we restored and uh, the movie files are all playable so there we have it a real quick uh, demonstration of how you can use brew to uh, restore data back to disk and then use p5 to archive it and take advantage of the uh, the quite rich media interface that p5 provides for browsing footage and media files that you have archived thanks for watching